Hi. In a recent interview, Ronnie Wood said that he and Mick Jagger have completed nine new tracks for the upcoming Tattoo You box set. When Ronnie says new material, I'm guessing he means overdubbing old studio stuff with new vocals and instrumental tracks. Now, outtakes can be very good, mediocre, a bit disposable. But as the original Tattoo You was largely composed of studio outtakes recorded during the 70s, and the album turned out to be one of the Stones' finest albums, in my opinion, I'm really looking forward to this. But back in 1981, I had a very different feeling when I knew the album was going to be released. The Stones had a massive tour booked, starting on September the 25th, in the States and then continuing through 1982 in Europe. But the trouble was they didn't have an album to promote. Keith Richards. The thing was with Tattoo You, it wasn't that we stopped writing new material, it was a question of time. We'd agreed we were going to go out on the road and we wanted to tour behind a record. There was no time to make a whole new album and make the start of the tour. The album's associate producer, Chris Kimsey, said at the time Mick and Keith were not getting on, but they desperately needed to get an album out. Kimsey was sure he could make an album, a very good album, from the stuff that had been recorded and then rejected or forgotten. Mick Jagger, 1995. It wasn't all outtakes. Some of it was old songs. I had to write lyrics and melodies. A lot of them didn't have anything, which is why they weren't used at the time because they weren't complete. They were just bits. Two weeks before the album hit the shelves, Start Me Up was put out as the lead single. Now, the only version I'd heard of this was a dreadful reggae version called Never Stop. So, I was kind of waiting in trepidation. But, I shouldn't have worried. 14 seconds in, and I'm hooked. Hook, line, and sinker. A classic Keith Richards riff, Lagging a millisecond behind Charlie Watts' metronomic backbeat, Ronnie Wood adding layers of variation to the riff, Mick strutting like there's no tomorrow, but listen to Bill Wyman's dub-inflected bass. I guess harking back to the song's earlier version as a reggae rocker. Next up, Hang Fire. During the 1970s, a lot of bands tried to imitate the Stones' seemingly sloppy but in reality tight as hell style. We had the Heartbreakers, the New York Dolls, Iggy Pop on Kill City. And it seemed with Hang Fire, the band had listened to all these other bands and their variation on that classic Stone style. They had absorbed it all and then threw it straight right back at them. With the message, we're number one and number two ain't even close. Slave. This was called a standard blues jam by Rolling Stone magazine, really? No, I'd call it one of the band's brilliant explorations into funk. It has an irresistible groove, the backbone provided by the wonderful rhythm section of Charlie Watts and Bill Wyman. Billy Preston on organ, Pete Townsend on backing vocals, I kid you not, and also jazz legend Sonny Rollins on saxophone. Mick Jagger. I said to Sonny Rollins, would you like me to stay, stay there in the studio with you? Sonny replied, yeah, just show me where you want me to play and I'll dance the parts out. If you're new to Sonny Rollins playing, please give a listen to his album, Saxophone Colossus. It does what it says on the tin. Little TNA has Keith on lead vocals. The song, especially Keith's guitar playing, Harks back to his rockabilly roots, Eddie Cochran, Scotty Moore, and of course, it has another classic riff. Keith, it's about every good time I've had with someone I've met for a night or two and never met again. She's my little rock and roll, my tits and ass with soul. Black Limousine, Ronnie Wood. There was an old sly guitar guy called Big Moose, and there was one particular lick he would always play. And I built the whole song around that little lick, building on it, shaping it, with Mick adding the lyrics. By the way, 
Mixed vocals on this track and on the whole album are some of his very best. They are simply outstanding. Black Limousine sees him in his mid-Atlantic drawl, straight out of the Dartford Delta. Neighbours ended the original vinyl album's side one. It's a song about Keith getting evicted from his New York apartment block after Neighbours complained about him playing his music too loudly. This is unbelievable. You have one of the greatest guitarists in the world living close to you and you complain about his music? You should have daily sprinkled the hallways with rose petals for the great man to walk on. And when you did see him, on the rare occasions you did see him, you should go down on your knees, touching your head to the floor, saying, I'm not worthy. Neighbours is a heavy, almost Cajun stomp of a song with some more Sonny Rollins dancing. Now, side one was great. But for me, it's side two that transports Tattoo You into classic album status. The Stones, of course, founded their career on a love of black music, primarily the blues. But Mick and Keith never stopped exploring that genre. The funk of Fingerprint File, the mutant James Brown grooves of Miss You. On side two, they blend in Chic, Prince, Al Green and a hint of Smokey Robinson and it results in an intoxicating transcendental brew. Led by Billy Preston's majestic keyboards, Worried About You is a slow burner. It builds up the tension, with Mick singing in an impossibly high falsetto. Ticking guitars, Bill and Charlie so deep in the pocket they ain't never coming out. It builds and builds to a melody that's so brief it almost disappears before it starts. Tops starts off all moody and atmospheric before settling in to a classic talked song that any Motown band would be proud of. Hey, it even sounds like Mick is being backed by the Temptations. Heaven is just Charlie on drums, Bill Wyman on bass, synth and guitar, and Mick on guitar and vocals. Hey, who needs Ronnie and Keith? It's a swirling, drifting, sexy, psychedelic gem of a song, unlike anything else the Stones ever did. Ain't No Use In Crying features another classic soul groove. Ain't No Use In Crying, Stay Away From Me. Mick wringing every ounce of emotion out of his vocals. I can imagine it all getting too much for Mick and he goes down on his knees like his hero James Brown and has to be helped up by the rest of the band and slowly led away. The emotion was just too much. And last but not least, waiting on a friend. Mick says this is all about friendships in the band. The video shows Mick, Keith and the stepping razor himself, Peter Tosh, sitting on some steps that look suspiciously like the building of Led Zepp's physical graffiti cover. Mick and Keith look pretty happy, so maybe their relationship wasn't as strained as we are led to believe, or they're great actors. So there you have it, a collection of outtakes and rejections which the band and Chris Kimsey turned in to a classic record. So I'm looking forward to hearing the new stuff, the nine new songs come up to this standard. So thanks for listening. Please stay safe, stay well, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.